Everything's on silent. Good morning, crew, and welcome to Raw Vlog number 46. Raw Vlogs are recorded in front of live hot beverages and delivered to you raw and unedited. If you're unfamiliar with the channel, this is the MTB Allen Airhorn channel. It is a companion channel to my main uh, MTB Allen channel where there's mountain biking content. Uh, this Raw Vlog is a series on the Airhorn channel. Uh, we'll also have uh, Airhorn interviews with the likes of the Outsider MTB, which we had previously. Uh, in any case, if you want to keep seeing stuff like this, hit that subscribe button. You might not be subscribed. You might be watching this and not realize you're not subscribed. If you're not, hit that subscribe button. Share it with friends. Let's get this thing out there. This is also available, if you don't already know, on any major um, podcasting platforms as pure audio. So I'll be trying to keep that in mind as we move forward. Wow, I'm already off track. Uh, these are raw and unedited. Um, the topic of today is what if you suck? What if you suck? Before we get into that, though, uh, a little bit of channel news. Uh, just fair warning, the camera might shake every now and then because I keep leaning on the table. Um, yeah, anyway, channel news. We um, we just got some new shoes. We just got these guys. We just got the Trail Cross. You can see I still have my, my tag is still on there. Look at those things. Here, let me bring them a little bit closer to you and give you some focus. Trail Cross, for those of you who are listening to this on the podcast, I'm showing the 510 Trail Cross LTs. I tested out the um, the mid pros, the mid pro at the Sedona Mountain Bike Festival, and um, I couldn't get those in my size. They run about a half a size big, so I have to size down half a size, and the um, <laughs> I hate to admit this to you, but the they don't go small enough in the mid pros. And honestly, I'm not really sure if I have gotten the mid pros. Anyway, I got the LTs. We're probably going to do a review on them. Um, they look a lot better in person, in my opinion. And they are a lot more rugged than I remember from the demo. The the Maybe I just wasn't paying attention to the mid-pros because I put them on and just rode them. But holding those things in my hand, they're pretty tough. I know they look... I'm not supposed to get into this, okay, but I'm going to talk about this in the review, but they look like just like running shoes when you just look at them, but they're like, they're like punching them and they're, they're, yeah, anyway, we'll talk about that in the review. In other news, uh, we're going to be doing, we're hopefully going to be bringing uh, Tony from the Outsider MTB channel back on for another interview. We got a really good question from Paul Dominic about um, bike brands and buying from stores, selling, uh, buying direct. How do you go about buying a bike? And um, hopefully we're going to get him on and we're going to just, we're going to chat about that. I'm also hoping to get Katie uh, on the pod, uh, on the podcast, uh, to talk about, uh, her coming into mountain biking because she's still pretty like new to mountain biking and she's also a woman. And I think there are some specific things we can talk about in regards to that. Um, that's it for channel news. So stuff I forgot stuff I forgot. So, okay. We're going to talk really quickly about the um, the Dunning-Kruger effect really quick. I'm not going to pull out any charts. I know there were some people who felt like they were in a conference um, having to listen to my presentation. It's okay. Um, the main thing that, the, the one main thing I was trying to get across in that, that I totally failed at getting across was that the, um, the fact that you can chart out, that you can make a, a visualization with two axes uh, use, okay, when you do that, those two axes, the variables on that, on the vertical and the horizontal, the X and the Y, they are what I would call relatively independent variables. So when we, when we talked about the original part, the, the, what we would think would happen where your confidence and your skill level would like, would move together, they would be strongly correlated in a nice like diagonal line. Well, if that's the case, then that's not a very interesting chart. 
Um, it means that they're just strongly correlated um, and you might as well not plot them on two different axes. The fact that your and the point, whole point was the fact that your confidence and your skill are relatively decoupled in terms of how much confidence you you have versus how much skill you have. You can have a lot of skill and low confidence and vice versa. That is what was interesting about that. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I know I I feel bad because I felt like it was a pretty cool concept, but I just did a really poor job of presenting it. So yeah, um, yeah, let's, let's, uh, that's it. That's the stuff I forgot. I forgot to do the good stuff last week. Um, apologies for that. So yeah, the main subject for today is what if, what if you suck? Um, and the short answer, and you know, you could probably just stop listening after this is who cares? So what? Um, you know, I did a, uh, pod, I did a podcast interview with, uh, Matt, um, from Shut Up and Ride uh, a while ago, and he asked me, like, what am I good at? And the answer that that's really kind of there uh, in my head is I'm really good at doing stuff I suck at. Um, I have no problem uh, going after things that I know I may not be any good at. And the, the thing is, if you've never done the thing before, whatever it is you're trying to do, you're likely not going to be good at it at first and your progression may have different arcs different um you know progress lines but you're going to suck at first and um i remember a long time ago there were um i remember like interviews uh i think it was maybe was it with kelly slater i don't remember who it was with but um there were people who are the thing that they are known for is often the thing that they were not super good at right out of the gate. Um, and the underlying concept there is that there's something about the person that appreciates a challenge and appreciates the work and the like unglamorous day-to-day tasks that you have to do in order to get better at something. There's something about that person that makes them good. Let me let me back up. There's something about that attitude, right? It's not tied directly to that person. There's something about that attitude that gets them to build skill upon skill upon skill. Um, And really, we're talking about the difference between talent and skill. I think um, we all have various talents. And I don't, I don't really even know what that means. The more I think about it, like what does talent mean? Natural ability, I guess. Um, and it seems like if you really break down talent, and I'm just kind of like going off the cuff right now. I'm always going off the cuff, but like really uh, out on a branch right now. But it seems like talent could be just strongly tied to your genetics, your your environment, um, and and just set up that way um they talk about like weightlifters olympic weightlifters and we're talking like the stuff you see at the olympics we're not necessarily talking um powerlifting we're talking about like doing the clean and jerk and the snatch uh, those the people that have what they call short level levers they'll maybe have a long torso and short arms and legs they tend to be really good at that just because physics right levers um Uh, And not to go into detail about that, but you could say the same thing about maybe a tall mountain biker. Yes, I know there's plenty of short mountain bikers, but uh, yeah, I don't want to get into that. But I just know that all I'll say is this is when I watch somebody who's like pretty tall go through a rock garden versus somebody who's pretty short, um, it does look different. And so there are certain advantages that come with certain body types. But Okay, let me just back that up. I know, like, there are some small people out there. Like, Danny Hart's like a little dude and just freaking kills it. Anyway, coming back to the point, I feel like there are whatever factors, whether it's physical, mental, environmental, but there are certain factors that um, that let uh, in a person's life that make that lend to them. Man, I really had that sentence written out in my brain, and it sounded really cool. Um, <laughs> There, 
there are certain things that lead to a person being predisposed to a certain activity. Um, I, however, have been predisposed to doing activities that I'm not very good at. Uh, like I look at my skateboarding and I was never very good at skateboarding, but the thing that kept me at it and the thing that kept me like honing skills and like slowly building skills over a really long period of time and never getting very good. The thing that kept me at it was my passion for it, was my love for it, was what I got out of it. I didn't need to do a super technical trick or do anything really huge in order to get the payoff. And that's what kind of kept me coming back. So, you know, compared to a lot of the people I rode with, that I skateboarded with, I kind of sucked. I could do a couple of tricks. Like I was really good at bonelesses. Like most people would be ollieing 13 stairs. I would be bonelessing 13 stairs, which now that I think about it, it's kind of dumb. Um, it's kind of <laughs> it's kinda dumb in that like it's kind of crazy. But I could boneless the heck out of like so much stuff. But anyway, uh, point being, I wasn't very good at it, but I loved it. And what I would find is that people would dig skateboarding with me just because I was stoked on it. Um, and maybe that's just kind of what I'm good at, you know, is the stoke. But um, that's the other thing. Like if we were to draw another th- another chart, and I'm not going to do it, okay, but if we were to draw another chart between stoke and, um, and skill, those could be... The, those would clearly be independent variables. You could have them on two different axes, 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 and you would have an interesting chart. It wouldn't just be like a straight diagonal. You would have a brr, 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 diagonal. Um, Do you ever see? Um, I think it was Copland. And anyway, I'm not going to go into that. But Ray Liotta diagonal Copland. Look it up. Um, you got to come at it diagonal. So what if you suck? I say it's fine. If you are into it, if you're interested in it, go for it uh, because we all suck. And really, you know, if if we can reflect back on Dunning-Kruger effect, you feel like you suck. It doesn't necessarily mean you do suck. It means you have, at that point, low confidence, and that's not a terrible thing as long as you are using... um, built skills, like if you're building skills, if you're doing the things to get those skills uh, to suck less. Um, Yeah, so that's a lot of the kind of attitude. I don't know if I've actually said anything right now other than like, it's okay to suck. Um, I think there was like a point I was trying to get to there. Um, Yeah, okay, so uh, that's the other thing I think that's kind of there when we think about sucking at something. We're often thinking about somebody else's uh, view of what we're doing. Somebody watching us trying to hit a jump that we've never hit before and we're not very good at jumps, whatever that case is. Whatever your case is, rock rollers, rock gardens, whatever, berms, you're not good at it. You go to do it and you know there's people maybe watching you and you are can feel judged and you can feel like you're going to look like you suck in their eyes. You may know you suck, but then there's that judgment aspect. A lot of it has to do with the fact that they maybe don't know your background. But I say, if you don't do that to somebody else, if you see somebody doing something and they suck and you you feel like they suck at it, but you're able to look at them as somebody who is in the process of moving along a line of progression. They're sucking right now, but you might come back in a week and they might be a little bit better. You might come back in a month and they would be awesome at whatever they're trying to do. If you have that in your head, why not expect that kind of um, good attitude out of anybody who's standing around watching? Um, I know going back to skateboarding, um, and I think this is also true in mountain biking, but going back to skateboarding, one of the things that Um, I always appreciated about that culture, at least the people I hung out with, was the people you rode with were always aware of where you were at in your riding. They were aware of your ability to do whatever trick or negotiate whatever obstacle. 
And they were stoked for you when you overcame something, even though it might have been really easy for them to do that. And I think that's pretty similar in mountain biking and um, for the people, you know, and I think it's just kind of good to remember that, like, if somebody else were to look, if I, if I knew, if I have this like negative opinion of myself and I'm over judging myself and I imagine that coming out of somebody else, like, why would I be okay with that? Um, if I'm okay with, you know, like if I'm not okay with doing that to somebody else that I see on the trail, uh, then I can look at the other person that's judging me and be like, that's on them. You know, I, I have to have empathy for somebody who has that kind of like negative outlook on another rider. And don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that I'm like some sort of mountain bike angel. I'm fully guilty of seeing somebody on the trail and being like, oh, God, what a squid, blah. You know, like I'm fully guilty of that. Um, and I've also, but I've also gotten knocked back. I, I'll i relate one story real quick. I was at Snow Summit and it was uh, during a period where uh, I just, everything was working really well. I could ride the trails just, I had a high level of confidence and would get annoyed if, you know, I would get like a spud in front of me that like wouldn't pull over and was going slower or whatever. And I would just get annoyed. Um, And one of the things that happened, one event that really kind of affected my attitude and made me dial that back was I was riding behind two riders and the rider in front was going pretty slow and just looked janky. They looked really unsure and just, I was like, okay, cool, but could you please pull over? Um, when we got to the bottom, I overheard the, the second person. You want to meet my cat? Didi, come here. You, I overheard the second person say to the person in front, um, I can't remember what they were saying, but basically I learned that the person in front was coming back from a really serious injury and all the all he wanted to do was get a full pull on party wave the westridge um and so he had his buddy come here cat so he had his buddy just kind of like uh you know play like just like a, a protective, uh, just like to protect him, you know, to like kind of be there uh, to give a little bit of buffer from somebody just kind of being like right on his wheel to give him the opportunity to do a full pull that he hadn't been able to do in a really long time. And he, I got to tell you, I felt like such a jerk after that. Um, yeah. Anyway, I didn't want to get too much into all that, but uh, that's just kind of coming back to like, it's okay to suck at something because you don't get better at anything unless you start by sucking at it and being okay with sucking at it and being okay with having a low level of confidence with what you're doing and having the right amount of confidence by building skill. Um, the one thing I was going to say, what is it like? What do you got to do for the skills? It's unglamorous right? It's the kind of stuff that's like, doesn't post very well on Instagram or show very well on YouTube. It's like the day to day things. It's the little incremental things that you do and you progress over time. Um, yeah. And th- those are things you got to do. As a note, uh, one of the channel channel news that I was going to maybe do is I'm, I'm thinking I might do the Ryan Leach, uh, pro- uh, program and sign up for that. Uh, and maybe I'll bring, bring y'all along for the ride on the MTB Allen channel. Um, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. I hope you dug it. Hit that like button. Check to see if you're su- subscribed. If you're not, hit that subscribe button. And uh, I'll show up in your feed and you'll be supporting the channel. See you next week. Meh. This is the kitty. Can you hear it purring? She's getting fuzz all over my 510 shoes.